Good afternoon. Good morning to some. Um, welcome to part two. Um, I hope you all caught part one. If not, um, Selena will talk about that, but I will put that uh, link in the chat. So if you missed part one of their webinar series, then you can catch that as well. So this is part two, the art of storytelling, building your adult education brand through stories. And we have with us two rock star presenters. We have Selena Shands and Anika Jackson. So I'll let Selena um, start off. Okay, fantastic. Thank you so much, Bethel. And hi, everybody. Welcome back. We hope you uh, drop your name in the chat and say hello while we're getting the uh, PowerPoint here. I'm going to share it right now. And it's just great to see everybody back. It's fantastic. So as Bethel said, this is part two um, in our series of, so there's four parts to this webinar and uh, series, and it's all about building your brand, building your adult education brand. If you missed part one, we'll put in the chat box, uh, the link to the recording. We also give you a homework assignment and some templates, things of that nature to really help you build your knowledge as we go through this series. I'm Selena Shands. I'm the CEO and founder of Full Capacity Marketing, and we've enjoyed a long partnership since uh, 2017 with CoAbe, supporting them, developing the Educate and Elevate uh, campaign, along with Move Ahead with Adult Ed and the Behind Every Employer campaign. Uh, we hope to see you all in Nashville. Uh, this series is actually leading up to a pre-conference session in Nashville. Um, so hopefully we will see you there. And also we'll be teaching a couple of workshops there as well. Um, I've personally been in workforce and education for over 30 years and full capacity marketing has been around for 21 years. I've had the pleasure of working with many of you in the webinar today and helping you with branding, marketing, and communications. Today, the majority of the presentation is gonna be handled by our VP of PR and Operations, Annika Jackson. So Annika, I'll turn it over to you for intro. Thank you so much, Selena. Uh, we are so happy to be here. Um, I loved the work that we've done with CoAB since I've been here. Um, and I love the history of everything that we do in adult education. So I've been in marketing and public relations for a little over two decades. I am a product of going to community college and then going back to school later in life. And now I teach PR marketing and branding at USC Annenberg as an adjunct professor. I have a podcast called Your Brand Amplified, which talks all about integrated marketing, our favorite thing. <laughs> storytelling and a lot of other aspects of business ownership, entrepreneurship, uh, and just things that anybody in any kind of business or organization need to know about the ever-changing landscape. Um, and so I'm very happy to be here. Thanks for having us. Fantastic. Thanks, Annika. So, um, Annika, while I'm kind of gearing up what our topics are today, maybe you could put in the chat, if it's not already there, the link to the previous webinar and handouts. And then if you want to get a jump start and get the deck, we've also uploaded it in our share file for this webinar. So you can download it, but we'll be sending the recording and all of that as well to all of you. I wanted to do a quick review on webinar number one, since the information does build uh, from session to session. And webinar one, which was in October, was around positioning your adult education brand. And many of you, when we see you at conferences, come up to us and say, hey, why are we the best kept secret? And a lot of that has to do with not really integrating and understanding the principles of brand building in your day-to-day -day operations. So we spent some time on that, uh, looking at the foundational elements of branding and then the pitfalls of core messaging and how to course correct. There were three parts, if you recall, to what is a good message, which is what is the audience's pain point that you're trying to solve? What is a good call to action, which is your solution? And what's the benefit for taking that call to action? And we spent a lot of time on the difference between what's a feature and what's a benefit and how all of those good messages need to be consistent across what we call all of your touch points, whether that's on your website, flyers, et cetera, social media, 
So uh, I encourage you, uh, hopefully you did your homework assignment. If you did, uh, put it in the chat and let us know how that was. And if you had any questions from webinar one, because we're going to do some coaching in this webinar as well. Today, Annika is really going to dive into the science behind storytelling. Why are we doing storytelling on this one? Because the stories are going to layer on that uh, webinar number one communication platform formula that I just described. So it's another element to a good message. We're going to talk about how you use stories in the brand building process, what is a good story, and how do you go about collecting the stories. So Annika, I will turn it over to you. Okay, thank you. So when you think about storytelling, and this is some of the material we're going to go over, when somebody's telling you a story, what are you thinking, right? You're relating to them. You are learning something about them. And you're able to contextualize what they're saying, which is why storytelling is so vitally important, particularly for adult education, um, to make sure that people really understand the benefit and they can put themselves in the shoes of other people who've been through your programming and what your organization can offer them. So really, as the slide says, informs potential clients, customers, students on your brand positioning and why you are there to help them. And it also unlocks empathy. My Angelo, of course, said, I've learned that people forget what you said, people forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. And that is why we think storytelling is really important to unlock the empathy and, and create that visualization. Good. Yep. Thank you. So we have a few slides that unravel the science of storytelling. Um, and what I really love today is that everything is about qualitative and quantitative analysis, right? You have to have the storytelling, but you also have to have the data that backs up why it's so important. And so when we're looking at storytelling from a content perspective, so that includes what you're putting on your website, what you're putting perhaps on social media, your newsletter, blog posts, what you're sharing to the public, all of it should involve the science of storytelling in your brand positioning. So we know that 100,500 uh, digital words are consumed by the average US citizen every day, which is a lot of content. So how much are people going to actually retain? Not much, right? So if that's the case, we wanna make sure that when we're sharing messages, we're keeping it simple, that we're keeping it short. We have a compelling title, compelling action to grab readers' attention. If 92% of consumers want brands or organizations to make ads that feel like a story, so they're seeing the benefit unravel in your ad campaigns, then we wanna make sure that we're delivering content that is linear and has a clear narrative. Um, and we'll share some storytelling techniques and frameworks later in the presentation that I think will really help um, outline how you can use this and how you can create your own storylines. And then if we know that the brain processes images 60 times faster than words, then we wanna make sure that we're also showing, not just telling. Again, limiting the number of words, but really sharing a compelling story through the words that you do use along with the images or video. And so they, there are a few ways that storytelling affects the brain. So I talked a little bit about how we relate when we hear a story, right? So that's neural coupling. A story activates parts of the brain that allow a listener or a reader to turn the story into their own ideas and experience. And that's called neural coupling. Then we have mirroring. So what is one of the best ways for humans to relate to other humans? It is to talk to each other, to hear a story, and then think about similar experiences that we've had. Why do we buy products or services that we do? When they could be a number, any number, right? There might be other adult schools in your area why should people come to you? Because they're going to relate to you through the storytelling. They're going to think about their own experiences in the context of what you're doing. Then we go to the other side, dopamine. So the brain releases dopamine into the system for emotionally charged events. So emotionally charged does not mean, mean to mean a uh, panic or something bad happens, right? It could be a really happy, compelling story, but it still has emotion woven into it. And then cortex activity, when processing facts, two areas of the brain are activated. And so well-told story that has a little bit of facts, a little bit of data, but also really compelling personal narrative helps engage multiple areas in the brain. And so it just, it sparks a lot of neurons and makes people want to relate and get excited about what you're offering. 
And then the anatomy of usage for the top tactics used by B2C brands. What does this mean? This means what are the best way B2C, business to consumer, so organization to adult learner in your case, um, these are the ways that people have most been using. And, and these are statistics from 2018, but what we find is that this hasn't changed too much um, as of today, but these are some of the co top content marketing tactics. So social media is um, one where people are still really being activated and finding brands and also hearing testimonials and stories, uh, owned articles. So that would be things that you post perhaps in your blog um, that relate back to storytelling, sharing positive outcomes of people who've been adult learners and have had really great experiences with you. Email marketing is not too far after that. And, and also then um, blogs that go on your website. So you have owned articles, which are articles that you write that can live on your website. They can also live in brochures. They can also be things that you pitch to the media, which is not super what we're going to get into in this um, module. Um, but just to give a little differentiation between those, videos are as important as blogs, right? Um, and then the next line we see in-person events, third-party articles, so that's PR, third-party validation, mobile content, microsites, so perhaps landing pages that speak specifically to a certain program or outcome that you have, and then case studies. So these are all really important ways, but this hopefully will help you think about when you are storytelling or when you're creating stories, what formats do people want to see them in? Because then they're going, you're going to be able to think of, okay, if it's social media, I know that I'm going to have to make it short form content with really great pictures, really great videos, and just a few words. If we get to articles, emails, blogs, you can have a few more links that map back to your content. Um, and I, I do see a few questions. Selena, do we want to see them up at the end or? Yeah, it comes from one of your fans from your uh, podcast, Christopher. And Christopher says, how would old school methods like print newspapers, local news coverage, PSAs, et cetera, fit into this? And I know you're going to get into that in our third webinar, but you may have some insight, quick insights for Christopher on this one. Yeah. So what what I would say, then thank you, Selena, and thank you, Christopher. Um, old school methods are still important, right? when we talk about the strategies that we want to use, so we've talked about positioning your brand. Now we're talking about storytelling and then we're going to get into the integration. We like to not leave any stone unturned. So we want to maximize what are the best things that you can use when you're looking at social media versus offline, right? You have to think about where you are and what the demographics and psychographics are for your ideal adult learners. Um, so that you can make sure that you're meeting them where they're at. Maybe some of them are not on social media and you've had really great response with print newspapers. Um, now that, that gets into a lot more semantics of like weighing the cost benefit analysis and thinking about um, that. PSAs of course are great because they're usually free. You know, everybody, it's usually listening to radio when they're in the car driving from place to place, if they have a car, if now, if a lot of people in your area take the bus or public transportation, they might not be listening to the radio as much. So it, so um, old school methods can fit in, but it really, we have to narrow it down to your exact market and how to meet people where they're at in your market. So I know that was a kind of obtuse answer, but. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a great answer because in the first webinar, we also talked about the need for eight to 12 touch points to get, um, a student to get through that enrollment funnel and actually enroll with you. So all of the things that you're mentioning, Annika, and that Christopher's bringing up are additional touch points. Um, the other thing though, I wanna mention real quick is while you were talking, Annika, it really hit me that because we see so many advertising messages every day, I think we covered this in the first webinar too, anywhere between six and 10,000, these stories can really help that message stand out, can it not? Yeah like the power of it. So I just think that's such an incredible point uh, for storytelling and the, and the power of it. Absolutely. And then when we get to a formula for smarter content, so one way to look at content is quality plus distribution plus retargeting equals better results. So what is quality? It's the balance between working with what you have and partnering with collaborator. Oh, 
of <laughs> partnering with collaborators. So it's always good to start with what you have, knowing that your resources may be limited. So you wanna see what do we have already in our toolbox, right? What images do we have? What student testimonials? What statistics do we have that we can create compelling stories from? And then see how you can outsource, which is a lot of what we do at FCM. Then we say, okay, we can do another video shoot or let's think about this angle. Um, and so starting quality, start with what you have, but then look to other partners or other ways that you can engage with outsourced help. Maybe you have students on campus who are really great at creating social media content or can go around and get stories for you. There are a number of ways to create additional quality content. Then distribution. So that goes back to a little bit of what we were speaking about, Christopher, uh, which is thinking about what will get your content in front of the right eyeballs to reach your exact student demographic where they are. Um, not everybody's going to have great internet access, right? So maybe thinking of outside the box, thinking about traditional methods like a newspaper or a radio, or thinking about things like bus shelter, bus transit shelter posters. And we've done that for, for clients before too, billboards. So you really have to think about those different techniques that will reach your personas. And then we get into retargeting. So that is paid search, um, which retargets consumers that are already interested. So if we have their demographic and psychographic profile, we know what kind of tools they're using, particularly online, then we can retarget ads to them, which create those additional touch points that Selena was um, touching on, uh, no pun intended. And then that yeah. equals better results. So 70% of customers say content marketing makes them feel closer to an organization. And that generates three times as many leads at 62% less than the cost of traditional marketing. So let that sink in, right? We all know that budgets are um, short and in high demand for a number of different things in your organizations. So if you think about quality content, the right distribution methods, how you can retarget when you do have the ability to do paid search, then that is not only going to make consumers, adult or educa education students feel more closer to your organization, but it's also going to cost you less in the long run. So now let's talk about storytelling. We talked a lot about how it affects your brain, why it's important to use storytelling to build up um, that support and that know, like, and trust factor with potential prospects for your programs. And we also know it makes your news, it makes you relatable. Right? We want to stimulate the audience's feelings, emotions, and convince and convert them without having to overtly sell them because we're selling them on the emotional peace of mind that they're going to get by going through your programs, whatever the outcome is and whatever that means for them, whether it means they want to get further certification, they want to help their kids with homework, so they want to get better at speaking English, or it's that they want they know that if they get XYZ, they're going to get a better job and be able to provide more for their family. So we want to think about what positive associations of your brand do you have? What are the market differentiators for your brand based on the brand positioning exercises you did in the first workshop that can now lead into storytelling? Uh, and so when we think about this, a lot of times people will think about the hero's journey, going back to Joseph Campbell. Um, and when you think about the hero's journey, you want to think about your customer, your adult learner as your hero. I think a lot of times companies think I'm the hero, right? Now you are a tool being used to help the hero on their journey, which is fantastic. And that's exactly what they need. But that's how we fit into storytelling. So you want to make your end user the hero. So that way they really do place themselves in the shoes of seeing themselves going to you as a resource and getting what they need to make their lives better. Go to the next. Yep. Thank you. So when done right, brand um, marketing is built around these brand stories. So you could think about your origin story. Um, there are a lot of different ways to showcase your brand messaging, your brand story. Your origin story could be how long you've served the community, what an impact you've had in that time frame whether that means that you're the longest standing organization, you're the newest, the most nimble, um, that you are formed out of a need to create um, new innovations, right, in your community. So whatever that is. Client success. So those are, we love hearing the testimonials, the 
end user, the adult learner, client success story, as spotlighting employees. So getting to know the instructors and the staff and the teams at your organizations, because this helps, again, people figure out like why they should come to you. If they know that somebody is really invested in them, then they'll become invested right back and feel a little bit more comfort. Um, and then societal recognition. So this could be that you've received a great award, a grant opportunity, that you've received something that helps provide technology to your students, any number of stories. And these are things that you're not just going to be able to tell them, but show them uh, and show them why they should relate to you. And I see another person posted. I don't remember if this was in your previous webinar. There's a place where you can put info. Oh, yes, we will be dropping um, in the links in just a couple more slides. Um, where you can submit stories from employer employees, employers, adult learners, um, the locator map and all of that. So Elizabeth, thank you for asking that question. Uh, so again, some things to think about are the people in your stories, the places and the process. So how you bring your client success. And there are a couple of storytelling frameworks we're going to share. This is from StoryBrand. So a character, which would be your adult learner, um, who has a problem, they might want to, again, speak, learn how to speak English better. They might need their high school equivalency. They might need certifications to get a better job, meets a guide. You are the guides here, right? Your organization is the guide. You give them a plan, you call them to action, and that results in, in your case, success, right? So you're able then to share what happened when they found you. Um, and so this is a one simple way to also think about conversely um, when you're looking at your competitors, right? What do you do differently? How are you helping guide them and giving them a plan better than your competitors? And that can help you shape your stories. And then I believe the next one is, yes, the Pixar. I love this <laughs> example. Uh, and this is used quite a bit for marketing, advertising, for writing books and a lot, not just Pixar, but a lot of movies use this structure as well. So this is a time-tested formula um, and you can see it in the plot of Finding Nemo. So once upon a time, there was a widowed fish named Marlin who was extremely protective of his only son, Nemo. Every day, Marlin warns Nemo of the ocean's dangers and implores him not to swim far away. One day in an act of defiance, Nemo ignores his father's warnings and swims into the open water. Because of that, He's captured by a diver and ends up in the fish tank of a dentist in Sydney. Because of that, Marlin sets off on a journey to recover Nemo, enlisting the help of other sea creatures along the way, until finally Marlin and Nemo find each other, reunite, and learn that love depends on trust. So that it's such a beautiful framework, and it's really easy to think about your storytelling with this framework particularly. Yeah, and I love the Pixar pitch for multiple target audiences. So if you think about it, and this we haven't really talked a lot about employer success stories, but they're also important to show how you're relevant, how adult education is relevant, and how you build the economy by providing that talent, that workforce. So a Pixar pitch for an employer would be like, what are what are the benefits they received from your organization? For a student, it's what did they receive, right? So you have to kind of think of each of those stories individual, but I love this. And it's fun too, right? The Pixar pitch is really, really fun. So let's give you some examples. And there are some questions in the chat and we will get to those at, in the q and I promise. So we wanted to give you some examples. And remember, Annika had said 76% use stories in e-marketing or emails. This is an example of a workforce development board in Contra Costa County who rebranded their organization. And they really boiled it down to two words. At the end of the day, what do they do for their community, for their job seekers, for their adult learners, for everyone. And it's really achieving equity. If they look across all their initiatives and services, this is what they came um, really as their brand foundation or their brand promise, if you will. So now if that is what they say they're going to do in the experience that they're promising to the community, 
then their next job is to find stories that align with that brand promise, achieving equity. And here you have the success story and you will see uh, it's, it's perfect because it goes in their newsletter and it's very simple. So let's look at this. Andre lost his previous job due to COVID and was living in his car. This is a barrier that Andre face, right? Once upon a time, Andre was living through COVID and he uh, lost his job. He was living in his car. Through the Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act via Rubicon programs, he completed on-the-job training to become a full-time community health ambassador with Haluna Health. Soon, so that's the call to action that he took. Soon he'll complete his associate's degree in social and human services and he's just getting started. And then you can click a link to read his full story. So always have a story. And again, you go into how does the story demonstrate your brand promise? That is super important. We'll talk about how you ask for the story, but this is an example very quick has a picture of Andre. It goes to how the brand is achieving equity. Very simple. Okay, I'm going to ask Bethel if she was able to fix the sound or if I just need to describe the video here. So Bethel, can you let me know? Yes, um, the sound is not working for the video. So okay. I can put the link in the chat as well, uh, just so okay. everyone can uh, watch it. Later. No worries. Yeah, we had a little technical difficulty, which is why we were running a few minutes late today on being able to play videos. But when you download the handout and Annika can drop in the chat box, the share file where you put in your name, your email, and then you'll have access to the to the slide deck. There's a link in here to go on YouTube. And this was a campaign for 15 community colleges promoting career education. And there are all kinds of stories in here, and they'd be great for you to go through and listen to this, uh, the playlist here for students. There's also a playlist for employers, but it, it follows the same thing, that the same formula that we talked about in webinar one. Pain point of the um, target audience, in this case, her name is Lydia. Uh, the second is the call to action, and the third is the benefit, right? So in this particular video, Lydia uh, found that she tried to go to college in Los Angeles area, and she just thought that she was a number, and she didn't feel like people really cared about her at, at the different colleges in Los Angeles that she had tried. So she tried a rural, rural college, and uh, this was part of the 15 community colleges in the region. And the whole theme behind the campaign was find it, be it, and that you could find a lot of different career pathways throughout these community colleges. Um, she really struggled with what she is. She's going in different pathways. And then she found the culinary program and just absolutely fell in love with it, fell in love with the college at Columbia College, learned the skills, got a fantastic job, a career pathway. She's very happy now. And so the call to action was talking to other similar students that says, hey, find it, be it, you know, go to this school or go to this website here. So again, in this particular instance, it demonstrates the campaign promise of find it, be it. So a lot of good videos there. And, and I would, you know, when you look at commercials or you look at any kind of video storytelling, some examples that we've given you in this deck, Go through and really try to pick out the formula that we have taught you in that first webinar, um, because then what you're going to do as a next step, once you get it, uh, is you're going to go back and revisit that communication platform formula from webinar one, because you're going to add the story to the message. So, for example, let's say you're promoting ESL on a particular medium, like your website, a flyer, and a social media post you're going to want to share a story of an ESL student who overcame a common barrier that you tend to see with your ESL learners um, and changed their life, right? So that's the story, very similar to Andre. Um, not that they, it's not important that the outcome is that they learn English better, but by learning English better, how did that change their life? Was it, were they able to really communicate better in the community? Did they get a better job? Did they, uh, 
uh, get a promotion? Did they help their kids with their homework? Were they a better role model? So those are the kind of emotional stories that we want to pull out. Those emotions are really important. So again, you're building on from webinar one. You're taking that message uh, of the pain point, call to action, benefit, and then you're layering on a success story. And this is why you want to collect multiple stories that represent success about all of the services you offer, whether that's adult basic education, career education, ESL, citizenship. You know, you want to have a story for each one of your service offerings. You're also going to want to have them handy because when Annika gets into webinar number three, we're going to dive in specifically into earned media or using public relations. How do you get these stories out there in the media? And Annika, I don't know if you just want to talk a little bit about from a journalist perspective, reporters, why do they like stories so much? It's probably like all the stuff you just talked about with the with the brain and everything. But what is it about stories that drive our media? It's well, number one, if it's a local story, that is always fantastic because we know that the journalists that are still out there, especially for local newspapers, are always looking for feel-good stories in their communities and ways to tie in. And so that's one way that we always recommend, particularly for adult education, workforce, um, that you form those relationships if you don't have them with local media. Um, the second thing is that it helps them structure their stories much, much more easily. So if you can come to them with compelling information that has data, that also has the storytelling and has some visual elements and pictures that they can use, it makes their jobs a lot easier. Uh, whether they pit, they use it right away or whether they wait months because we have we have that case a lot. PR is a, definitely a long game, like so many things. Um, but those are just a couple of things that we want to tee up of why it's important to make sure that you have these stories and you have people that they can talk to. Another thing that we find sometimes is that we might pitch a story um, angle and they don't necessarily want to talk to uh, you as the client. They might want to talk to a student. They might want to get, they want that, even though they are the third party validation for what you're doing, they also want to talk to other people who are going to validate uh, what you're doing without you telling them necessarily. So if you have a list of people that can represent what you do, whether it is on um, the student angle or businesses, sometimes they want to reach out to them and get their stories rather than, you know, even though you've teed it up, you've shared a little bit, teased it out, um, that also helps them. Fantastic. You can see how the webinars build on one another. We're getting you all set up on good messaging stories, and then we're going to lead into earned media and then paid campaigns. So lastly, don't forget to submit all of your stories, all these ones that you're gathering to CoAid. Why is that? Because as a member of the adult education system, CoAid is your organization that works so hard to share these successes with legislators and demonstrate your value. We have the numbers, right? And the analytics, which is what legislators wanna, wanna see, like who we're helping and all of that and the numbers what we've done, but the stories really bring it to life, bring a campaign to life. And so one of the campaigns that we launched in 2017, which is still going on, is Educate and Elevate, which is educateandelevate.org. And if you go there and you click on adult learner success stories or employer success stories, or there are there even some for teachers as well, you'll get a pop-up that looks like this. And uh, it's all the different adult learners uh, success stories that have been submitted to CoAid. This is fantastic if you've done this for multiple reasons. One, it builds your brand. Um, secondly, it puts your organization front and center with legislators and it supports organic search engine optimization. So what do we mean by that? If someone's putting typing in adult learning in my area or get a job or some other things, the more you are shown on different websites, Google counts that as a point or some of the search engines will say, okay, yeah, this is they're relevant, right? That's what they're looking for, the search engines are. So it's a way to build your organic search engine optimization up without uh, paying for ads. And it also showcases your innovations. So Annika has dropped into the chat two different links, one to submit your adult learner stories and one to submit your employer stories. 
So please do that because it helps the entire system when we can leverage each other's successes. So I want to switch in, switch gears right now and talk about how you talk to your hero in getting a story. So asking for the story. So this is just a talk track that you can modify, but it goes something like, you know, our team is so inspired by your personal story and how you've accomplished so much while you've been here with us. I'm hoping you'll let me interview you and develop a story about your journey that we would use on things like websites or social media, marketing materials, that kind of thing. Would you be open to taking 10 minutes to chat with me? I really think your story would inspire others to take advantage of our services. So look for your heroes in your classes, look for the ones who are really excelling, who are changing their lives, and then approach them in that way. And then, of course, we're going to give you a homework assignment. Your assignment number two in adult uh, education storytelling is create a hero's journey success stories for each of your identified market segments. For example, those in ESL, those in ABE, those in career education, et cetera. Use the Pixar pitch to develop a rough outline of your hero story. So once upon a time, where was this student at? What happened? And because of that, their challenges, they found you, right? Well, because of the solutions you executed, something great happened to them. What was it? Uh, and so just follow that Pixar pitch because it's fantastic. And then interview the, the hero to ensure you have all the facts, their challenge, their solution, how their life has changed a result of working with you, and then rewrite it so that you can utilize it on your website in marketing materials and for public relations efforts. Um, there was a question that I'll get to about social media posts here in just a moment. Uh, one point, though, I do want to say that you want to make sure you connect with your leadership or your, your legal department to make sure you get a media release form signed, which gives you permission by the hero to utilize their story. Um, and while there are samples of media release forms online, keep in mind that this is a legal document. So just make sure you're obtaining the right advice on your final form. And again, that's the, the link there. So Annika, I know we had a couple of questions before I go on. Um, let, let's talk about a few of them in here. Um, one of them was, can you address pictures? So visuals, what is a good number to show, say for social media and posting? Should there be a headline each time you post? Um, so that's what they're kind of asking, like sort of some best practices around storytelling and social media. Yeah, so um, when you're talking about having multiple pictures on one post, on one feed post, that's called a carousel. Um, so you're kind of, right, um, it's not round, obviously, but you're flipping through the pictures. Uh, so we call that a carousel post. So what I would caution for that is that it's good to have maybe three to four pictures. Any more than that, people might not scroll through. Instead, you could break that content into multiple posts and that might have the same overall message, but show different people, right? Or different situations. I, I'd have to see exactly how your organization handles to really be able to give you a, a super clear yes, no defined answer. But what we're also finding is that for posts, even if you can, and like Instagram makes it really easy now, even if you just have photos to add music and to add other elements that make your post more engaging. So use all of the free tools that every social media platform gives you for those. And also pictures are good, but video is even better. So, um, and you can easily turn. So if you want to have a post that has several pictures, more than say three or four, then instead you could create a little video out of that. So it creates movement with the pictures. It doesn't have to be anything more than that. It doesn't have to be live talking. Um, you can put that to music and then you can still have the right caption, the right hashtags. Fantastic. I like this question from Anthony. Are there any prompts that help our students begin telling their stories? Yes. I want to, and Annika, I know you have some. I, the first one I would say is when you're meeting that student and you're starting classes and everything, just say, you know, one of the things we really thrive on here at our school is word of mouth. So if you have someone that you know that has a similar situation we really encourage you to share your story with them and how this has helped you, this class or this course or et cetera. 
And we also want you to share it with us. So as we move along in our class, if you're finding things that are very inspiring to you or helping you, let us know because we love to hear those stories. So opening a dialogue up front when you're teaching to let them know you're looking for stories. Um, Annika, what other suggestions do you have? I think you summed it up very, very nicely. So I don't know if I have anything else to add to that, Selena. I'm just... People okay. like to share their stories when they're given the opportunity. They like to feel like they're contributing and that they're part of it, particularly if they have a, a story that is really, you know, a success story and they, they really feel the sense of pride from what they've been able to achieve with you. Yeah, definitely. A um, couple of other questions in the chat. Uh, you do have access to the webinar from the last class. I'll ask um, Bethel to post that link to the webinars that are archived for COABE and that should be in there along with the handouts. Um, is the pre-conference session at COABE in the morning or afternoon on that Sunday? I do not know that. Um, I think they're setting the schedule as we speak. So um, uh, we'll have to look into that and see which ones you guys can plan. Um, Christine said the form submission for the homework, is it different than the other one you gave us? Um, is that purposeful? So, um, yeah, the form submission, I think you're asking, Christine, from the first webinar, or the oh, form submission for the homework. Annika, do you have a, a read on that? Maybe you can clarify, Christine, a little bit. The form submission for the homework is different than the other you gave us. It is different. You're layering on, I think the first homework assignment we had said we wanted you to um, go back and use your uh, evaluation skills, uh, knowing now what is a good message and pull a message off your website or social media. Does it have the three components of the audience's pain point the a call to action and a benefit. So now what we're asking you to do is layer on that. And I'll just say, you still have those three parts to say a portion of your website, if that's what you're looking at, but you also have a success story that uh, goes along with that content. I hope that's helpful, Christine, but if you, if you meant something different, um, yeah, that, let me know. I think I answered it. Is how you interpreted it, Annika? Yes. Okay. Okay, good. And then uh, Christopher, how long does it take for the school to appear on the adult school locator once it's been submitted? That goes to COAVE. Um, so I would give it like mm, maybe three to four days. And if you have not, uh, you can send an, an email to info at coabe.org and that will help you as well. Oh, great. And thank you, Annika. Okay, let's see. Oh, okay. Christine, thank you for clarifying. The TSA form has a different number than the one we submit for Educate and Elevate. Okay, so if that link is not working, I would go to educateandelevate.org, click on Adult Learner Success Stories, and then it'll say Submit. Or if you're submitting an Employer Success Story, click on that link as well, and that will help because that way you're going directly to the website. Okay, really good questions. I love that you you all are going to submit. This is fantastic. Okay, keep the questions coming and I'm going to give you some other free tools and resources now. One of the things I wanted to mention, many of you, you know, you're listening to Annika's podcast, which is fantastic. Annika, that's up to what? 40,000, 45,000 listeners every month. It just keeps growing and growing. I mean, when Anna came on board, it was at 30,000 and now it's 45,000 and just keeps going up and up and up. So make sure you're listening to the, the podcast. We also have taken all of that and developed a course, which is the brand amplifier for workforce and education professionals. So you can go to our website uh, at fullcapacitymarketing.com and click on the EFCM Learning Hub. And that'll take you to, you can download the course descriptions. You can sign up for the courses um, and you can also schedule a consult with us as well. So just go to the website and click on um, contact us. Annika's podcast is what, Annika? You want to, Tammy wants to know your podcast name. It is Your Brand Amplified. And I'm going to drop a link in the chat so you can find it easily. And uh, it's available everywhere that podcasts are 
as well as YouTube, um, Traverse TV, and a couple of other apps. Fantastic. So you've got quite a bit of work to do between now and in January, because we really, what we're trying to do here is help you build a foundation of good messaging that will cut through the noise and really help you um, build a relevant brand. And so we've, we've talked about what is a good message. We've given you homework assignments on that. We've talked about building success stories, the importance of that getting those stories for all your services and, and offerings, and then um, uh, submitting them to COABE as well. Part three and four build on that. Part three, Annika is gonna take you through Earn Media, why it's an effective tool to expand your reach about your adult admission. And she's gonna give you three strategies that are gonna jumpstart you on working within your local media landscape and beyond. And then the fourth one is going to be how you can take the Move Ahead with Adult Ed campaign and its toolkit and create a localized uh, recruitment campaign in your area. So again, we'll be tackling earned media and then paid as well. Okay, Annika, I'm looking through the questions. Is there Are there anything, other questions that you see? I don't think so. I've tried to put all of the links into the chat for everybody. Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, do you have to take part? Do you have to take part of each webinar or just the ones that interest you? No, uh, you don't have to. Yeah. Yeah, they do build on each other, but um, and they are all recorded. So if you can't make one live, then please feel free to watch it afterwards. Um, they're good refreshers, no matter where you are in your journey. So, uh, yeah, you certainly don't have to come to all of them, but we welcome you. Definitely. And I really encourage you to look at the curriculum that we've developed for the course itself. That is 10 modules, and it really goes into brand building, uh, it goes into all the psychographic, demographic profiling, introduction to marketing, and all of the tactics that, you know, you're interested, social media, all of that. Uh, hopefully, we'll see you in Nashville as well at the pre-con session, and we've got two workshops. One will be on uh, you know, uh, looking at building your brand, kind of a condensed version for consumers and your adult learners. And then the other one will be about uh, behind every employer campaign and a statewide approach that we're doing in Illinois. So hopefully you'll find that informative as well. Make sure you connect with us on all our social media platforms. Just go to our website. They're all listed there. Our blog posts are also there. We've got a lot of thought leadership articles and we do a lot of guest podcasting too on workforce education podcasts, things of that nature. So it's always great to see you all. Uh, we will be sending a follow-up email to all of you with a recording, with the handouts, the link to register for the next webinar, all of that good stuff. So we really, uh, really thank you so much. And Annika, thank you for, for all of your expertise and knowledge in the PR world and bringing that to this industry as well. Thank you. It's, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> it is. It is. Bethel, I'll turn it back over to you to close out. Okay. Sounds good. Um, I wanted to address that one question about your pre-conference. So if you go to the 2024 COE um, website for the 2024 conference, you can go under presenter resources and it gives all the pre-conferences. There's a tab for pre-conference sessions. Um, the one for with Selena and Annika is Sunday morning. So that will be the morning session. Um, so if you want to take note on that, and then there's also other pre-conference sessions, and then it also gives some breakout sessions as well. Um, the actual schedule for all of the regular sessions for the conference will not be finalized for a couple more weeks. Um, Michelle works tirelessly just to try to get everybody in when they want to and things like that. So that won't be out for a little bit, but at least you can want, you can look at conference at a glance and things like that. I do want to say thank you so much to Selena and Annika. Um, I am launching a poll, so please take the poll. Um, there is a link a bunch of times in the chat for the first part one. So if you miss that part one, you really want to, you can just go on our website under webinars and it's under um, webinar archives. And then you scroll down, it's October 10th. So um, if you want to watch that, it's on there. 
Um, and then this one will also be uploaded as well. So if you want to go back and take a look at the video and things like that, um, and then you'll get an email about part three. So thank you so much to everybody. Have a great afternoon. Um, and you can reach out to us with any questions. Thanks so much. Have a great day.